Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be on the ground. Today, we're checking out the new ground vehicles for the game, the new tanks, and the new... You'll see. Don't know what War Thunder is going to call them. You'll see. A whole new breed of vehicle has been introduced to this game uh, in 1.81. Not only the helicopters, but uh, I said before, we'll see. So we'll start with the Americans, not because I'm from America, just because it's left to right. You know, that's that's the only thing, okay? No biasness here. All right. I got to say, um, War Thunder, because we have so many vehicles now, we have to like redo this UI. It's kind of too... I mean, just to look at it as a new player, you're like, what the heck is going on? Maybe, you know, some subcategories and such to look nicer. Okay, that's beside the point. Okay, for the Americans, the first tank that you guys have already seen or the first ground vehicle is the York. This one we've already done a whole gameplay on. And this is the 240 millimeter. And the very unique thing about... Well, there's two unique things is that it doesn't hold break at all. I uh, don't... No, well at least from my time playing at Gamescom. Uh, Heat does not, you know, one-shot it like Ashoka, Ashoka or something like that, or M163. So it has extraordinary survivability if they don't hit your crew or your ammo. That's kind of, a you know, the staple with a lot of tanks. The, the thing is, the M247 is very spacious, a lot of room for you to miss or for you just to do nothing to the tank. You hit here, what are you going to do? Now, okay, well, you can get the ammo, but, like, there's a lot of space for that round to go through. You hit right here, you might get the, you know, the uh, weapon system, but the crew's still alive. Next thing is the ammunition that leaves the barrel is unique. Well, at least to tanks right now in um, naval proximity, few shells already thing. But now we have it in ground forces. These 40 millimeters uh, are proximity few. So once they get near a target... They will explode, sending shrapnel and shockwave and stuff that make the target not happy to stay in the air. The downside to the York, though, is its slow mobility, even though it says 52 kilometers an hour. It's, it, it's a pretty sluggish beast. And then the turret rotation. If an enemy's able to get a jump on you, you're not going to be able to turn your target in time um, to take him out. But with radar, you should be extremely aware of what's going on in your surroundings. So that's the M247 York. Pretty much already covered that. Next for the American is a premium, a T54E1. This one has been sought after and won it by the community for so long. It will fit the game so extraordinarily well. 8.0, let's go ahead and check out what this thing has to offer. So at 8.0, this is still a conventional tank. Now, sure, it does have ammunition that really isn't that conventional, uh, the Sabo and the um, Heat Round, but it's premises. A lot of armor, especially the hull, and uh, no stabilizer, no composite. This is old school War Thunder. Isn't that crazy? Now, this kind of vehicle is old school War Thunder. Insanity. Okay, let's check out the armor. As you can see, there's there, there's no composite at all. It's just rolled homogenous or cast homogenous armor. 8.0. You're dead. <laughs> I mean, with a lot of things at 8.0, you, you kind of get shafted getting up tiered to 9.0 turrets extraordinarily nice at least for bouncing chances but other than that it's not like the the most heavily armored vehicle the thing that it totes is a quick reloading 105 millimeter this is an auto loading cannon as you can see here here's it's is this a french tank i don't know here's the rotary drum that will launch it into the breach close it and send it and we're gonna have Jeez, 36 rounds of ammunition. I wonder how that's going to be loaded. Okay, so we're going to take Sabo, Heat, and Solid Shot. Oh, one thing I need to mention. The Solid Shot's gnarly on this thing. 309 millimeters of pen with a 105 millimeter barrel. The 120s in game, especially the M103 is only like 303 or maybe it got beefed up. Let's just double check before we say something that we shouldn't. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 303. 100,000 meters a second plus some. 1,000 meters a second plus some. Whoa, okay. Things could be wrong. There's a dev server. Uh, they have the same muzzle velocity. Have to wait and see. But right now, it's 309 millimeters a pen. And what that means is that... uh. 
five second reload rate. You have Sabo to get through the strongest thing, or you have Heat to get through the strongest thing. Sabo for the medium and then AP. And at the same time, Sabo on this thing is really not that strong compared to the AP. 318 to 309. So let's say, okay, let's just shoot this because we should be able to pet him even at this angle. Really? I got a feeling we should. Okay, maybe, hang on, maybe at, God, that reload rate's insane though. Okay, now it should be able to. There we go. Wow, just that little bit of angle countered this round. Look at this. If this thing gets into a gnarly position, like at a cap, or gets there right in time as enemies are pulling out of a cap. Gunner, loader, cannon breach, potentially dead. I mean, I don't know what I... Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh, whoa. So if you switch ammunition, they have to reload the first stage. I mean, this replenish is almost, like, realistic. Like, th this is how long I would expect... This is, like, almost twice as long as someone grabbing ammunition from a... a a second stage and put it in the first stage. That that is much longer than necessary to put it into the first stage. Oh wait, wait. Okay. One's loaded. Oh wait, did they put all of those? No, only one. That is an extremely lengthy process to change ammo types. The last American tank is a top dog tank. The Americans have a new 10.0 vehicle, the M1 IP. So we have the M1 IP loaded out and the M1 Abrams loaded out. What is what is the difference? One thing I noticed right now is that the M1 Abrams weighs 54.4 tons. The M1 IP weighs 55.3 tons. So we have to find where that additional weight went. Okay, let's check main gun and secondaries. M60 or M6, ugh, M68A1. M2HB, M240. Same main gun and armament or secondaries. Maybe the uh, M1 IP is faster. 1500 HP, 3000 RPM, 72 kilometers an hour. 1343 HP, 3000 RPM, 68 kilometers. So with that information, let's go and look at armor. X-ray. So here is the internal armor. So we have a 32 millimeter plate right here, roll of homogenous, and we have 600 millimeters of NER, NERA elements right here in a space. And then we have the 101 millimeter uh, rolled homogenous. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, M1 IP. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. They, they took the KSP approach and, you know, added more boosters, added more NERA. You can see the gap. You can see how much is filled up compared to the M1 that has uh, 600 millimeters of NERA elements. This one has 800 millimeters. Oh, can I get it? Uh, there we go. Got it right here. Strange. Hello. Okay. 800 millimeters of NERA. And so let's check how this does against kinetic because I, I, I feel like the NERA doesn't have that big of effect, but with more materials, it should do something. Or actually, with 200 more millimeters of material, it should do something. Okay, we're going to be versing Germany here. Let's take out the DM-23. Really good round. Let's go to, yeah, let's go to maybe 1,005. Now, let's go to 1,000. Yeah, this is kind of the average 1,002 average um, engaging distance. So, M1A1, or excuse me, the M1 Abrams. Yeah, 404. So, it could go through. It, it, it might not go through. 404, 408 it can counter. Lower glacis, extremely penetrable. 347. Let's go and switch over to the M1 IP. Okay, 1002, same setup. Haven't moved the camera at all. Wow. As you can see, it's not much, but it does improve against kinetic. Well, it seems a little bit weaker down here. Maybe my mouse was in the wrong place. 
little weaker in the lower plate, much stronger in the upper or the um, cheeks of the turret. But that's not where an ERA really does its business. You know that 800 millimeter round hot missile? The one where even versing today's vehicles in the game, it just slices right through. Maybe ERA can counter it for sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to um, the M1 IP. One thousand millimeters of protection against heat or chemical rounds. One thousand. Front up, no problem at all. This is going to be absolutely incredible for countering helicopters until you realize that this is a much more lucrative position for them to shoot at, you know. <laughs> They'll go right, right through this. Lower glacis will be kind of similar to the... Um, M1 Abrams, but the turret cheeks are just extraordinarily strong. No heat's going through this turret. Now, right here they can. So they shoot here. Or just shoot here. But at long range, uh, these cheeks are huge compared to the other elements of the tank. So that's the uh, M1 IP. That's why it's so special. That's why it has additional weight to it. Okay, moving on to the Germans we have. Looking at my sheet here, we have two new... Oh, no, we have... Three new vehicles. One we already showed, the TAM. Then here is the other new one, non-premium M48. A2 GA2. 100 and... God, this thing looks really cool, actually. Whoa, it's got some pretty nifty optics and stuff. I'm sure that would be useful in real life, but in War Thunder, uh, what that will equate to is um, trolley armor. No, they're not even leveled in here. We're going to have Sabo on board, the standard DM-13 Hesh, and then follow up with 400 millimeter heat. So if you guys like playing the M48, M60, more power towards you. My personal preference in worth, I can't stand it. They're just, they're just too slow. I'm actually going to make a video on the M60 Rise soon of how it doesn't fit the meta. Next up, if you guys can look over here. If I can draw your attention here, Germany has their first 9.0, Leopard A1A1L slash 44. So it's a Leopard A1A1, but it has uh, it has uh, this monster of a gun. Ooh. I got to say that, that 120 fits the Leopard A1A1 nicely. Very good proportions on it. So not really much else to say about this, though, that uh, you're going to have... A, just a, Germ, Germany has had one of the best top tier lineups since um, the Rocket and Jagdpanzer and the and the Gepard were at it. Germany is one of the you know most lucrative uh, top tier lineup. A lot of them are now, but these guys were kind of at it the first. Okay, so we'll move on to Russia, and this is where things are going to start getting interesting. So we have the uh, T eighty B that we covered, lower armor than the T sixty four B, but. Uh, a much better engine, much better top speed and reverse speed. This is the main event, though, of this patch, I think, for ground vehicles. So, wow. Okay, classified as a light tank, just like the BMP. No IFB kind of tag or anything yet. As you can see, we have a 30 millimeter on board, a 2A42 cannon with... Uh, fully upgraded will have 100 millimeters of penetration oh wow so this is amphibious force crossing by swimming but with this armor upgrade it adds 2400 kilograms yeah, let's just check the armor out right now it's probably nothing wow that is awesome the strongest armored portion on this tank is going to be the wood in the back wow <laughs> i can't wait to, to players to shoot this and not be able to pen or heat will get detonated on it. Let's see what the, uh, the armor package does. So I guess this is just to help out against... Yeah, this is just pointless. If, if I mean, if you want to cross a river. Might... Yeah, just some heat protection, I guess. Yeah, which really doesn't work well in War Thunder. Any kind of space armor, or like shirt skin or anything like that, doesn't really affect heat rounds that we have. And then on top, we have four of these 9M113 600mm pen... Extremely good rockets, extremely accurate, and uh, from the test drive, here, I'll just take it out real quick. They reload pretty darn fast, but 
He only got four of them, which will definitely grant you, you know, one to two kills. So second gen missile, got an MBT, extremely accurate. Very good tracking on the mouse. A little higher, there we go. That should be a kill shot. Already reloaded, look at that. So let's go for uh, this uh, chieftain. And the next one's loaded. So by the time your missile hits, the next one is ready. Well, at, you know, maybe a thousand, two thousand, three meters. Don't want to test that still brew. Okay, and now for shooting temp high. I wonder what that means. Here's a 30 millimeter. How much elevation? Oh, it's stabilized too. Yeah, this will definitely be able to take out planes or aid in it. And with 100 millimeters of pen, this is only 64. This is a low pen round. Lastly, almost forgot, here is a T55 AM-1 100 millimeter D10TS, which is extraordinarily fun shooting um, APC BC, or at least explosive AP shells into uh, top tier vehicles from the side it makes killing them uh, much easier as well we have a um, apfsds and atgm i personally wouldn't really want to get this thing premium wise 9.0 uh but for those who want you know to collect it or want to have it um it will do okay it's just i mean really good armor design if it didn't base or didn't have APFSDS or ATGMs uh, hitting it all the time. That is going to be it. Other than the French bat chat, really, really, or bat chat, don't really, really need to go over that too much. The thing I'm most excited about is the warrior. This is classified as a light tank in War Thunder. Oh my God. Gosh, so this is pretty much the British air quotes Bradley or the Bradley is the American air quotes warrior. ATGM confirmed a long barrel 30 mil. Holy cow, I bet some velocity can, can get kicked up with that and some composite. That's really nice of the British to uh, protect uh, Nigel right here or this is Nigel, or this is Nigel, or they're all Nigels. Where's the engine? Oh, ah, it makes sense now. The engine's in front. So this might actually defend against, especially if you hit right here. If you hit right here, you're, you're, you're just shit out of luck. I mean, not, not for the AP FSDS rounds, but this, this transmission and the engine right behind it, and then the ERA, or excuse me, the composite armor blocking a little bit as well. Let's go and see what this armor can block. Let's just go to uh, the Rocket and Yag Panzer Generation 1. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it can counter. It does nothing. Uh, well, actually, it can counter 90 millimeter heat. That's about it. But that's if you shoot right there. It will come into play, but uh, li a little too little. That makes sense. Do you guys hear the music right now? I'm going to turn it up for us. Oh, I think that's going to be an urban upgrade. So without that, we have, you know, no side armor at all. Hole completely exposed. But putting this on, let's see what this is. Composite side skirts. Oh. Composite side skirts. So uh, let's uh, let's go to a RU two five one maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting. I don't really understand this. It does add armor protection. I don't know if it's enough to justify using it. If they shoot wrong, they're 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 definitely screwed with this um, armor package compared to it not being on. We're gonna leave it on just because it looks awesome. Let's go ahead and check out our ATGM 600 millimeters of pen, projectile mass 12 kilograms, and once it gets there for the party, 1.4 for the explosive mass. Onto the gun. Default 60 millimeters. That'd be a little bit more. APHE 60. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. I guess they're right. They're just default AP shells and then there's high explosive shells. Okay, but this one I already care about. No way. No way does this gun only do 110 millimeters of pen. I don't, I don't buy it. But let's go and check out the BMP2 because that one's 100 millimeters. Oh, uh, yeah, that one's a long barrel as well. This one just looks longer for some reason. Ah, they're roughly the same. But with that, with enough dilly-daddle, let's go and take it out. ATGM online. Whoa, okay, that's, that's, that's a little bit of a bug, but uh, dev server footage. I really want to know how this, this ATGM is going to reload. Maybe just like this. Why, why not? Look at where it spawns from. Hang on, let aim a little bit higher because it's going to have to get there. The enemy tank has been oh, destroyed. wow. And for a T, pull it up. There we go. Right on. Perfect shot. Oh, come on. Get the last guy. Go check this thing speed out. Okay, res there we go. Extremely respectable reverse speed. Beautiful to getting out of harm's way. As you can see, it comes with a fire extinguisher, so you won't have to grind it. But a very fast, ve <clears throat> a very fast vehicle so far. 83 kilometers an hour is the top speed going downhill, I, I, I would say. Okay, time for the uh, fire into the main gun. So the gunners have to reload every so many shots. These, these, these are the wrong shells, by the way. Oh my god, two two shots for a crew member. It serves him right. I don't think I can go through this. Yes, I hit. Target. Yes, I hit. I don't know. Outside of that ATGM, this thing isn't going to be the best tank killer, which it really wasn't designed to be. But that slow firing 30 really sets it back a lot. You know, a lot of vehicles that really weren't known for killing tanks um, are able to in War Thunder. And th this one, I have a feeling that it's going to struggle a lot. But with that spotting ability, etc., I think it will be okay for supporting the team. Oh my god, even this you can go through, right? This is going to be much more effective just just by the fire rate alone. I mean, the characteristics of each of 
the uh, Warriors 30 mil and this 30 mil is pretty much identical. But I said before, this one's able to put more rounds on that uh, target as the Warrior goes pow, 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 pow. Which is, you know, not the biggest deal in real life because you're able to get accurate fire without wasting too much ammunition, etc. But in War Thunder, it's, it's, it's not going to be like that. This one right now is, is, is the better light tank at it. Did we just pin a side armor at... We just pinned his side armor at 500 meters. Okay, yeah, confirmed that the, the, the BMP2 will be the better one. But fellas, I hope you have enjoyed this video today. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite ground vehicle is. Right now, even by the performance, this one, I, I'm still looking um, the most forward to playing. Just its history. Just, it's just cool, especially how it fires. Granted, it's not that effective in the game, you know, but it, it kind of brings you back to some squad gameplay. Guys, again, hope you have enjoyed. Have a great one. Peace out.